Hey adventurers, welcome to another episode of In Skyrim. So we're here to um, recruit Gore, that's right. Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. <clears throat> Bartender? Hi! Yes, would you have any bottled water by any chance? Oh, and ten sweet rolls with that, please. So, recorder's here. Covid is here. Um, should I re dismiss? I don't know. What do you need? Follow me. You've got a little too much help with you, friend. Wouldn't want to swing and hit your companion. Lose the weight and we'll talk. Okay. Farewell. So... That'll be... Jurez. We've stopped. What is it? Alas, it's time for us to part ways. I was getting sick of your face anyway. Okay. Let's go. All right. Actually, there's another mod I wouldn't mind putting on. Yeah. And in. Where are we sleeping? And more importantly, what are we eating? I reckon that armor needs improving, God. Hmm. Okay. So, Gore's with us. Do you see something you desire? What skimpy outfit will you have me wear this time? That shield. Let's get rid of it. Right. Very well. <coughs> okay. Right, the quest was I was gonna do. Oh, God doesn't have the hammer I wanted. By the way, does that This calling? place makes me think of my brother Valis. I miss him, but at least I know he is well. <laughs> he didn't look too happy there. Um, the library. library. It's a pity so much of the time fell into the sea. 
I don't believe the college is to blame. All. This the page two. That, this that makes five in total. Truly this is unacceptable. To do such damage. Something the matter? A page from one of these texts, and four others, torn right from the spine. I've consulted with Urog's apprentice girl, <coughs> and she insisted, rather emphatically, that none of these tomes have been checked it's out a for shame years. What happened to the Mage's Guild? I told the girl that wouldn't preclude a thief from browsing the cases. Uh, mistakes happen, you shouldn't be so harsh. I don't blame her, though. It's the head librarian's duty to keep more sensitive texts behind sealed doors. You or perhaps it's the fault of the one who trained him. Lately, I see. In what? either case, the, the result is the same. It is as I feared. Someone has managed to steal key pages from the writings of Trectus. The two of you are collaborating on research. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry, yes, we have been working on something together. This is why I avoid being social. Uh... Tectus, the birth name of the maid Shalador? Shalador created Labyrinthian, and his imprint echoes across Skyrim. But I speak of another. Trectus is the birth name of Vanus Galarian, former Sigic monk, student of Iachasis, and founder of the Mages Guild. Uh, <clears throat> How is it, Master? Grow shrub made such an obvious error. It is not an error. It's far more likely that Urog holds an opposing position regarding the substance of these texts. Not to mention a stubborn refusal to recognize that a controversial theory might actually have merit. What controversial theory do you speak of? The majority of scholars are split between two disparate camps. Some believe the texts are worthless scribbles written by a child, one who had yet to grasp the vastness of his destiny. Others contend that the author is not Vanus himself, but a pretender hoping to profit from the mage's name. Both camps, however, are in agreement that the texts themselves have no intellectual merit. What exactly is these texts? I mentioned the pages from five separate texts were stolen. This is no coincidence. I'm sure you can divine why. Uh... One for each school of magic, perhaps? Exactly. According to the theory, there was purpose to Galarion's decision to divide his childhood journals into five parts. Contained within each, was a tale that alluded to spells and techniques, authored by a specific school. <clears throat> How do the schools of magic relate to these texts? It is well known that Galarian's gifts for magic were quite diverse. He could restore a rose to full bloom not long after burning it aflame, all the while fooling the mind into believing its scent had rotted away. Multiple disciplines. The theory goes that Galarian was on the verge of completing five new spells, one for each school. Spells of such tremendous power that even the immortal armies of Manimarko would countenance their fear. Unfortunately, 
Galarium's obsession with his nemesis deprived him of his patience. Nevertheless, before he embarked on the great battle, he left notes encoded in five works, so others could continue his research. You have any idea who stole the pages? I have an inkling. I was able to glean some clues based on my interviews of the residents of Winterhold, who seem far more observant of mages than the faculty. I sent my assistant, Jado Ra, to investigate the matter further, but I fear something grave has befallen him. I'll find out what happened to him. Finally, someone with initiative. I need someone to scout the area he was investigating. Your safety is paramount. If the mage in question is at the site, do not attempt to confront him, even if Jado Ra is in imminent danger. Eh. Uh. The Khajiit is a crafty one. He will leave clues behind even in death. Yet if you sacrifice both your lives, both your efforts will be squandered. Alright, I'll see what I can find out. <clears throat> Good. Jado Ra last left for solitude, but it is unlikely he is still there. I would start with the caverns near the shoreline. If you find him, and find him well, he may ask for a passphrase. Passphrase? Yes. The problem is, I seem to have forgotten that inscrutable Khajiit word he gave me. So in exchange, I ask you to tell him this. Tell him how, when I met him, I mocked his whiskers. How they were as black as an Imperial's hair. Tell him that his eyes are so narrow, that even when he laughs he looks unhappy. Yet their color still shines as bright as the sun. And if he finds that too sentimental, tell him he was more valuable as a rug. And when he accidentally lights his fur on fire, he would no longer be worth anything to anyone. Um. Okay. Until next time. She's in a rush to go and sit in. Greetings, Archmage. That's right, I'm the Archmage, aren't I? Malakath, watch over you. I should put on that mud so you don't have to be the Archmage. This place reminds me of Blingdon Stone. If you are here to finish me, then do it. Don't just stand there gaping. Relax, I'm a friend of Olivia Moran. Ah, this place reminds of rot. Mr. Decay. Mary, I do not trust one so green. Green? Told me you two had a passphrase. A way to recognize. I wonder how friends. many foolish surfacers have lost that is their lives true. down here. Do you know it? <laughs> she 
said you were worth more as a rug until you burned yourself. <clears throat> that is a very old mage I know you speak true. <coughs> Which must mean you are a college mage, and my eyes have deceived me once again. Yeah, it's a common mistake. Um, you were, Olivia said you were tracking a group of suspects. Correct. We had interrogated witnesses in Winterhold. Like those at the college, they are very sensitive to mages. And these mages were three. A child overheard them talking in private. It was but a single word, but it spoke volumes. The word was winking. Winking Skeva? That must be it. The tavern owner there was, as the master likes to say, careless. They often are. He pointed me in the direction of a room with a rather curious tenant. He never left his quarters, but of guests he had five in as many nights. He could not risk entering the room. A cloaking spell is but a justice trick to mages who can detect the essence of life. It is by the luck of the twin moons that I found a friend in an Argonian named Gulam A, whose sweet hands found the pockets of his visitors. We need to get you somewhere safe. No, I, I am afraid this cat has exhausted all of its lives. However, if you would be so kind, perhaps you would be willing to listen to a dying Kashit's final request. Ah, of course. When I was but a beggar, there was a Kashit female who provided me with alms. She was a poor farmer, but wealthy with kindness. Such was her kindness that she considered my bread. While others tossed their septums with disdain, she traded their arms for petty magic tricks. I still remember how her ears perked up ever so softly whenever I would conjure an orb of light in my palm. It was during one of these tricks that Master Veronin recognized my talents. Finally, I thought, this Khajiit will earn some real respect. No one was more proud of me than the farmer. Yet in the months that followed, I changed. Suddenly it was I who could not associate with her. <sighs> You've known better now. You would not be so kind if I were not dying, I presume. She was much the same. She could have been angry with me, but instead she granted my wish. Many times I would pass her on the street and say nothing. My eyes told her all she needed to know, and nothing she wanted to hear. I could find her. No, that is not necessary. You see, on some nights you could stare at the twin moons sitting in the heavens like a pair of mismatched eyes. She told this foolish beggar that if one Khajiit prayed to Mesa and another prayed to Secunda, they could communicate through the stars. Her moon was Secunda and mine Mesa, so my final request is this. The next time you look at the night sky and see the moons in flight, tell her. Tell her I'm sorry, and I never had a better friend, or a kinder one. Uh, I'd be honored to. Your words warm my heart. This Khajiit thanks you dearly, but we are not done yet. There is still the business of the notes, yes. Uh, how'd you get injured? That is the fault of my own hubris. Gulam A uh, charged a stiff price, but true to his word, what he possessed was worth every septum. The notes he stole contained five prospective locations where the mages planned to conduct their separate research. 
As per Mr. Marinin's instructions, I was to return to her with this information. I was about to do so when I saw the mage descend from his room. He was a Dunbar man, with a wisp of thick hair, eyes as hot as the sands of elsewhere, and wings of crimson war paint gliding down his face. In his presence, this Khajiit did not move, could not move, yet all his fur stood on end. Uh... Perhaps it is the result of being Khajiit, but I followed, and he noticed. And so he led me here. It is only by virtue of Master Merlin's teaching that I managed to hold on to the document. Uh -huh. How did you manage to keep the notes? I brought many sets of clothes in order to fashion the story. When I met the Dunmer at the inn, I was dressed as a farmer. When I shadowed him here, I came dressed as a thief. The mage assumed the first was a disguise, and the second my true form. Were I not a Khajiit, it is possible he would see past this disguise to the truth. However, like most illusions, the spell works best on those who wish to believe. This Khajiit thanks you dearly, but we are not done yet. I'll there take is the still the business. Thank you, friend. With that, this cat can rest easy. Tell Olivia not to blame herself. Her teachings Vienna? did not fail me. They are what gave this poor beggar a reason to live and honor in death. <coughs> Was he talking about Olivia then or? This other kitchen. Well, he's dead. in the dungeon. A bunch of the guards used to torture the prisoner in the cell next to mine. Wasn't right. Wasn't fair. So that's the new iron arm. Looks much better. Not showing off his arms though. Okay, so... I don't think it's an actual quest. Jedro rather is sorry. <coughs> Can't see the moon. Let's take a detour to get Gora bigger hammer. Good Lord, didn't anybody here subscribe?